Hi everybody, it's Allie. So welcome to the Oily Pet. We're gonna be talking tonight about how energy impacts our pets and how essential oils can help. So I have kept the videos off and the audio off so that I can make a real good clean recording for everybody um, because we have over 275 people registered for this webinar, which is awesome because it tells me this is a hot topic right now. So in this presentation, I am, I am exclusively going to be talking about energy and energetic vibrations. Anything that I talk about is not meant to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. But what I am going to do is I'm going to share with you information based on my knowledge, my education, my experience, all of my qualifications, which I will go through. But I always tell everybody that we need to know why we're using an oil and for what before we actually use it, especially with our pets. So just a little bit about me to kind of put in context of why I am teaching this particular subject, because this is really my wheelhouse, this topic. So I have been an attorney for 25 years. I have been uh, a prosecuting attorney and been in the criminal prosecution world focusing on protecting animals and handling animal abuse cases. And I've been in the courtroom, I have been uh, a public speaker at criminal justice conferences my entire career. I set up the National Center for Prosecution of Animal Abuse in Washington, D.C. through the National District Attorneys Association. I'm the founder and the CEO of a nonprofit called Sheltering Animals and Families Together that helps domestic violence shelters create on-site pet housing so that when families are leaving a violent home, they can take their pets with them. So I'm also the owner of Manifested Harmony, uh, which is a wellness and energy wellness business. I've done a lot of work with animals over the years. I'm an award-winning author of animal protection books. You can actually find those on Amazon. I am a longtime, 20 plus year animal shelter volunteer, uh, foster home and advocate for animals. But I am also a master energy healer teacher in three different energy healing modalities. I'm a certified health coach. I am a silver in young living. And because of the uniqueness in my background, which most days I think, wow, this is really bizarre. What have I done? <laughs> but because of the uniqueness of this, Young Living Corporate has invited me on three occasions to speak on their national stage about essential oils for pets, especially as it relates to shelter pets, rescues, and abused and neglected animals, because this is where my legal world and my healing world come together. So that is just a little bit about me. And I've written a couple of books. Um, one book uh, that I'm, I'm gonna touch on briefly tonight, uh, some of the aspects of it, is The Oily Pet, which you can get off of my website and you can purchase that. But the next book that is coming, I just have to wait, wait for my printer to get it done and I'm hoping it'll be available this month. Uh, but I wrote a book called The Oily Crystal uh, because I'm seeing a, a lot of well-intended but unsafe practices of crystals and essential oils being placed together and most crystals are toxic. So I wrote a book about it, which, uh, and then I'm gonna be teaching a webinar uh, in about a week and a half on it. So stay tuned for that one because I'm very excited about that book. And so these are the classes that I have uh, coming up this month. Oh, I wrote March. I, it should say May. Oh my gosh, you guys, that tells you this energy that we're in. <laughs> that should say May 13th and May 18th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you're going to understand when I start talking about the energy, especially what we've been dealing with today. Um, 
So you can register for those classes on my website at manifestedharmony.com. All right, so let's dive in because we are in a new world. So did, did we ever think that we would live during a pandemic? I mean, we probably actually never thought about it. And what fascinates me, and these are kind of the weird things that I do in my world because I still have a lawyer brain, but I also have an energy healer brain, is I go to various websites and I research. And currently there are actually 15 disease outbreaks, epidemics on the planet right now, according to the World Health Organization, 15. So this is not the only thing that's happening on the planet. So every day from literally the moment that we're in the womb to today, we are surrounded by viruses, bacteria, pathogens. I mean, I could just do a whole webinar on that and the response that is happening right now. But here's the thing, the virus that we're in is not necessarily our new world. Our new world is the new energy that we're in. So I'm gonna get a little woo-woo, I'm gonna get a little science-y uh, with you all. So whether you follow and learn from other energy practitioners or you consider yourself a light worker, which is just someone who brings light to the world, or you specialize in being an ostrich, a stridge and stridge and stickage and stick in your or you just know that something's different, we are shifting into a new energy. We are actually in the middle of it right now. People can feel it, animals can feel it. They may not be, most people may not be able to articulate what they're feeling, but they know that something is different. Post something in the chat. If you have sensed something's different with the energy that we're in. Because this time in history has most people, including people using essential oils, has them very concerned. And because we have no idea what will happen financially or health-wise or to kids in school or to those who have hands-on businesses like massage therapists and um, hairstylists or what's gonna happen to travel or to our elderly family members. I mean, yes, I'm seeing in the chat, you all, you all are feeling it. You may not know what it is, but there is no reason to be sad. There's no reason to be sad. I'm going to tell you that right now. We're going to a better energy, but like birthing a baby, we're going to scream the whole way. Okay. So <laughs> that's the example I love to give to, to people. Um, but, but what what I'm finding that people are really concerned about when you drill down, you know, this new world that we're in is people don't want to be silenced and people don't know what's true anymore. And people are starting to fight back and push back and question why companies and governments seem okay that are, that we're slowly being poisoned. You know, that our food, our water, our air is slowly being poisoned, and they're starting to question it. And I love it. I love, love, love it. So in the energy world, we've actually been calling this moment in time the Great Awakening. We've been calling it that for a long time. For the 15 years that I have really been in this world, we've been calling this the Great Awakening. And we weren't sure if this was going to happen in our lifetime, but it's happening because people are waking up. They really are. If you're using essential oils, you woke up and decided, I'm done with the toxins. I'm done with my pets being surrounded by toxins. So what's happening though is emotions are all over the board from I'm doing great, this is awesome, to full on panic and catastrophe. How am I going to get through this? Oh, sweet Jesus, help us out. And this is where the negativity of what's happening in the world, not negativity, I take that back. This is where the energy can feel negative from the planet and from us and can impact the pets that we love. 
but this is our new world and there's no going back. And I'm not saying that to scare you. I really want to empower you with this because we're going to a better place, going to a better energy. And so our pets are the ultimate copycats. So in the comments, tell me how many, how many pets you have and I'd love to know their ages. And while you're doing that, I wanna talk about the three ways that our pets take on energy that may not be good for them. So the three ways are pets take on our energy. And a lot of you are probably thinking, ruh -ruh, uh, <laughs> if my pet takes on my energy, we're all screwed. <laughs> Second, pets are influenced by Wi-Fi and electromagnetic frequencies. And third, pets feel the energy changes in the planet. So let me ask you this. Have you ever been told that you and your pets are alike? Maybe you look alike or you act alike. So that picture that you see on the screen was taken back in the year 2000. Wow, that was 20 years ago. And that is my cat, Sammy, who has since passed on, but we won a look-alike contest. And it was on the front page of the Lansing State Journal here in Lansing, Michigan, when I was a prosecutor. Um, because we did, we looked alike, we acted alike. So let, let's talk about the first thing about how pets, I'm, I'm looking at all of your pets and the ages of all your pets. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. You guys are awesome. So let, let's talk about animals taking on our energy. So here's the first thing that, that you may not have ever heard. Animals do not come into this world with karma or soul missions like we do. Humans come in with karma, we have lessons to learn, maybe you need to learn patience or gratitude, and we come in with soul missions. We all have a purpose for being here. Some people find their purpose and shine it in the world and other people don't. Animals don't have that. Their mission is to serve the people that they bond with. So one thing that I learned very early on in my energy healing training is that pets will take on our energy, the good, the bad, and the diseased. And they do it to spare us from hard times. Do not try to negotiate them out of this. Believe me, I have done that. I did my best lawyer closing arguments with my cats. And I'm like, you cannot take on my energy. This is my problem, it's not yours. And they took it on even more. So it is what it is. It's just something to accept. This is, this is their mission, is to serve you. And they want you to be well, because if you're not well, then they really are in trouble because they need us to stay around for their welfare. So when someone comes to me and they're asking for help with their anxious pet, I usually find an anxious person. And when someone comes to me with a pet that is constantly vomiting, I usually find a person that has digestive orders. And when I have somebody come to me that their pet is acting out, I find that that per person is acting out. So have you had your pet ever come to you and be by your side when you're sick or pay unusual attention to you right before you get diagnosed with something? Because that's what pets do. Yes, I'm seeing yes in the chat. They come to us. They're here to serve us. And we need to let them. So our pets mimic our, mimic our energy, for better or for worse. It is in their best interest that we keep our energy as balanced as possible. We're not going to be perfect. We're humans. We're not going to be perfect. But their lives literally depend on us staying well and staying balanced. So our pets are also influenced by Wi-Fi, by electromagnetic frequencies from inside the house, all the electric electrical things that we have, all the technology that we have, everything that's outside of our house, all of the cell phone towers, don't even get me started about 5G networks, um, all of the power grids that are out there. The, and I don't have time to get into it in this presentation, but these things 
are rewiring us at the cellular level from the inside out. And our pets are much more sensitive to this than we are. So, so in the next slide, I'm gonna talk about how everything is energy. And I think we can all agree that electricity is energy and our pets feel it. So here's one quick tip right now. I know this is an essential oil class, but I'm also an advanced crystal master. If you have any quartz based crystals, amethyst, citrine, clear quartz, rose quartz, and they are sitting near technology or electrical outlets, get them away from those areas because they're enhancing the energy. Put black tourmaline in those areas. Okay, that was my little side rant <laughs> to help you because it'll help your pets. And then the third thing, our pets also feel what's happening on the planet. And we know this because they get to safe ground when there is an earthquake coming, a tsunami coming, a tornado, or, or any other weather event. They feel it, and they feel it in the ground. So let me tell you about Sammy, because we more than looked alike. We were absolutely sharing the same energy. So for 12 years, I lived in the Washington, D.C. area, worked nationally as a prosecutor, traveled all over the country, sometimes 45 trips a year, training prosecutors, you know, dragging myself in and out of airports, coming home at midnight, leaving at four o'clock in the morning to catch an airplane. I was stressed and I was getting sick. I was going into full on adrenal failure. And my, my doctor caught it in time, thank goodness. But here's what Sammy did. When I would come home, he would promptly vomit at my feet. <laughs> and, and of course, I was stressed. And I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm really stressed because I got to clean it up. And poor Sammy, what's wrong with you? I dragged him to the vet. And they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. And my energy healer teacher said, Allie, you are a bundle of stress. Your cat is taking on your stress and expelling it the safest way he knows how. From that moment on, I brushed my energy field any time I came into my house. Sammy never vomited again, ever. None of my cats have ever vomited again. So stand on your front porch, take your hands, and literally wipe your energy field like two inches off of your body and just brush down like you're dry brushing. And that will really save your energy from being taken on by your pets. But then we figured out that he was also feeling weather events. So this is gonna sound kind of crazy, but I was able to track it on a calendar that whenever there was a tsunami or an earthquake in Asia, about 30 days later, Sammy would get violently ill. Because when we think about those events, they create a vibration in the earth. Think of an earthquake. It creates a shaking of the earth. Do you think that shaking stops once the earthquake sh stops? It doesn't. So it's like when you take a pebble and you throw it in a still body of water. It creates a ripple effect, right? That's what happens with the earth. Any sort of shaking, earthquake, tsunami, even the shaking from a hurricane, a cyclone, a tornado, superstorms, creates a vibration in the earth. And it literally just keeps cycling the earth until it slows down enough or gets stopped by another vibration. So I could actually look and see, okay, great, Malaysia just had a tsunami. Uh oh. I'd put it on the calendar, and sure enough, 30 days later, Sammy was very sick. But then he'd be fine a couple days later. Pets feel the energy changes in the planet. Absolutely, hands down, I've had far more experience in this than I want. And so if your pets right now are showing symptoms of just being physically ill, it could be because they are feeling what's going on in the planet. So let's talk about energy and frequencies. So 
everything in existence is made of energy vibrating. We have an energy field, it's called an aura. Our pets have an energy field. Absolutely everything on this planet, in this universe, in all the multiverses, are energy. It kind of freaks me out when I'm in an airplane and I think I'm just riding in compressed energy. <laughs> It freaks me out. I kind of feel bad for the person next to me. And that's when I really start snorting a lot of Valor oil to get me through it. <laughs> so when frequencies connect with each other, so we have a frequency, we have an energy field, our pets have an energy field. When we all connect with each other, because I know many of you, when we see each other, our energy fields connect. And when you are in your home with your pets, your energy field is connecting to your pet's energy field. So here's what happens from a physics principle standpoint. All right, I'm gonna get a little geeky on you. All right, so the principle of entrainment involves a higher amplitude or a higher energy dominating a lower energy of the similar frequency. And what happens is this higher and this lower energy are gonna meet on a middle ground to synchronize together in harmony. So let me give you the example of a tuning fork. So you have a tuning, you have two tuning forks that are tuned to the note C. You smack one really hard. I mean, you give it a good whack on the table and it really starts vibrating and singing. And the other one you just strike very lightly. The one that you struck hard is a high amplitude energy. The one that you struck lightly is a low amplitude energy. What you will find, because they're both tuned to note C, is the lightly struck tuning fork is going to rise up and start getting louder. And the louder tuning fork is going to get quieter. It's going to lower a bit. And then both of them synchronize together. It's phenomenal to watch it. It is unbelievable. So this principle of entrainment is mutual energy that works off of each other. So this synchronizing happens when you're feeling content or okay. You know, you don't have strong emotions. You're not super happy or super sad. You're just, you're okay. You're neutral. You're feeling good. But then you come across somebody who's really happy or really a downer. The other person has a big, strong energy, either positive or negative, and they bring you closer to their level, but then you bring them a little closer to your level. So we experience this with each person that we meet. We, ex we can do the same thing with our pets where they raise us up, but we can raise them down a little bit. And that's entrainment. It's synchronicity. Now, let's go to the principle of resonance. This actually relates, to, again, to two similar frequencies, but the lower frequency is actually going to rise up to the higher frequency. So this is where, let's take those two tuning forks again, and you strike the tune, one tuning fork that's tuned to note C, but you don't do anything with the other tuning fork tuned to note C what happens is the one that you didn't strike starts to vibrate and make noise. It's really cool. And that is where two frequencies, one is gonna dominate the other and raise it right up. So again, you know, this is an example that you come into contact with somebody who has a really strong energy and they impact you for better or for worse. Same thing with your pets. We can impact them, okay? I don't want anybody getting upset over this because here's the thing, you don't know what you don't know, right? That's my favorite saying. I didn't know this, I was making Sammy sick. I had no idea. I could have saved myself thousands of dollars in veterinary bills. <laughs> we don't know what we don't know. So let me talk about the principle of inter interference. This involves two energies that come together and they create a third energy wave. So if they're of a similar energy, neither is gonna dominate each other, they just add together. So it's like one energy is 
five, like five hertz or five megahertz. And another energy is the same thing, five hertz or five megahertz. They add together and they create a 10 hertz or a 10 megahertz wave. So they add together and become more. But if two energies are not similar, they actually cancel each other out. They're just not in sync. This is a great example of two people who are out of sync. They have nothing in common. They meet each other. They're like, you know, I have nothing in common with this person. They go their separate ways. They just ignore each other. Their energies cancel each other out. Neither is really affected by the other. But when you have two people who come together and they click, like their energies combine, they're talking and talking and having a great time. They raise each other up and they leave each other feeling better. You've had that happen, right? That's principle of interference. It's really cool. I think this is what happens when we get together with our pets. We take our energy, their energy comes together, we get all excited, they get all excited, and we create an entire new energy wave, okay? So all of these principles happen when we are with animals and with our pets. So animals have little, if any, emotional baggage to drag us down. But guess who does have baggage? We do. So I'm going to get to the frequency of essential oils, but this is what oils do for us. Because in, in the world of people, animals, and essential oils, who's got the most baggage? Humans do. <laughs> this is why we need them so much. Okay, let's get back to our planet. So our planet is evolving. Now, I'm not going to get too sciencey here. Believe me, I could. I do this in my crystal healing classes, and it really blows people's minds. But our planet goes through cycles and even has times in history where the poles flip. Mm -hmm. The North and the South Pole flips. Can you imagine that? So here in Michigan, if we flipped, we would end up being the Southern Hemisphere. And so we would basically be going into fall right now. We'd basically be like Australia. So we're about 75,000 years overdue for a, for a pole flip. The earth is really stressed out about it. Mother earth isn't real pleased about that. There's a whole variety of reasons for why it may happen, but we are long overdue for a pole flip. And she's getting frustrated, okay? That frustration is coming through. Now, what I really want you to understand about the earth evolving is Schumann's resonance. This is the earth's heartbeat. Yes, the earth has a heartbeat. From space, the earth actually makes a sound. You can buy Schumann's resonance music. It's beautiful. It, find it on YouTube. It's just beautiful to listen to. But the earth has a heartbeat. The earth actually makes a sound in space. What keeps the earth in balance is two things. We have an iron core and we have a silica, a quartz crystal crust. Iron core and silica is like a battery. And so the earth is actually struck by lightning about 100 times per second or 8 million times a day. Isn't that crazy? And that's what keeps the battery going. And that's what keeps our frequency in check. And that's what keeps gravity working so we just don't float off in space. And it's what keeps the earth in its place in the universe so that we just don't go you know, out to where Pluto is. But the frequency has been spiking since January of 2017. This is something that I track frequently and I am now tracking daily. So the base frequency of the planet is 7.83 hertz. I know that doesn't really mean anything to you, but a healthy human has a frequency of 7.83 hertz. It's why when we put our feet on the ground and we're in nature, we feel awesome. We are sinking with the planet. It is so important that we do that. But the frequency has some relation to crazy things that have been happening on the planet, like crazy weather events. Um, it's influenced by what happens outside of the planet, like solar flares or uh, coronal mass ejections. That's what they're called, CMEs. 
um, the coronal mass ejections actually send out highly reactive charged energy that affects the entire universe. And so if it happens in the direction of Earth, whatever part of the Earth is facing it is going to get the blast. And these go in cycles of every 11 years. We're actually in a heightened coronal mass ejection energy right now. And these blasts can cause us to feel icky and angry and cause sleep changes and create war and violence and death and all sorts of things. It's actually, because of this phenomenon, it's created an entire um, science, uh, study of science called heliobiology, which is the relationship between heightened solar activity and epidemics. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> what are we in? We're in an epidemic. Um, they can even link the solar activity to plane crashes, electrical outages, grasshopper infestations, and human activity. Okay? Because have you ever had those days where you're like, everybody is clinically insane? I'm staying home. I'm sitting in my blanket fort with my oils and my crystals and my cats and my Hallmark movies because I'm not going out. People are crazy. What's going on today? This is what heliobiology studies. I think it's fascinating. So this is just kind of a little background that everything on the planet and in the universe impacts us here on Earth, every living being. And I think it's why the study of astrology is so interesting to so many people, because if you or your pets feel the full moon, like the big one that we had this morning, that's just simply energy. It's just energy and it's frequency. So let's talk about frequency. So the Schumann's resonance. Oh my gosh, you guys, this stuff, I get so excited about this. You, okay, just please let me geek out on you for a second which is shocking because I truly went to law school to avoid math and science. I did, true story. And now I love science of crystals, science of essential oils, science of energy. So you're probably looking at this chart and thinking, what the heck is this? This is the heartbeat of the earth, okay? You got February, you got March. On the next screen, I'm gonna show you April and May. So I mentioned that the base frequency of the earth is 7.83 hertz. That's, a, that's an important number. I want you to write that down. Find pen and paper and write 7.83 hertz. So the Schumann's resonance has been tracked since 1952. And what has happened since January of 2017, it has been spiking and it has been raising up. It has spiked as high as 150 hertz. Normal is 7.83. It is spiked to 150. That was in March of 2017. And when I looked at the days that it spiked, March 16th and 17th, gee, there was a huge cyclone that hit Australia. There were mass protests happening in Chile. The U.S. did an airstrike in Iran. There were mudslides in Colombia that killed hundreds of people. I mean, I could just keep going and going and going. That's what happened on the day that the Earth's frequency spiked to 150. Well, now we're finding that the frequency is, kind of, is pretty consistently spiking over 40 hertz. Well, our bodies are attuned to the frequency of the 7.83 hertz, and now it's spiking over 40 consistently? So when I talk with my energy people, we've always wondered, is the earth doing this and the humans and animals feel it and it's causing us to evolve with the earth or are humans doing something that is causing the earth to evolve and the frequency to increase? And I don't think we really know the answer, but over the years and especially last month, I have come to believe that this energy increase is not only asking us, well, making us upgrade as humans, but we are actually causing it. So before I get to that specifically, I want you to look at February. Okay, pre-pandemic. Okay, there were a couple spikes. I mean, there were some big ones near the end of February. And then look at March. All the pink boxes that you see are the spikes because look at the white. 
when the spike is going in a downward fashion, because the energy chart stops at the, starts at the top. And when you see the, the spike moving downward and getting white, that is heightened frequency activity. So you see a little bit near the end of February when this all really starts to kick up speed. And then look at March. It's like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I mean, it's like, holy moly, what, what is going on? What came first, the chicken or the egg? Is, is the earth creating the pandemic? Is the pandemic creating the spike? Is it, is, are the humans, are we causing the spike because of global collective fear? What's going on? This all impacts the animals in our life. Stay with me. Look at April. April, oh my gosh, we got hit. We got hit big in April. Let me show you something interesting. Look at April 4th and 5th, the one, the second pink box. That's when the uh, global meditation happened, where healers all across this globe came together in one day, and the 7.83 hertz spiked to 76 consistently. So that's why I believe that humans are having an impact on the frequency of the, of the earth and vice versa. And then April 18th and 19th, go down to that grid. You see that? On, on the screen, I put a big pink box around it. You see those big white chunks? That was the global healing event where for a weekend, the healers around the world at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. their time in all different, different time zones, we were sending healing to the earth and look what it did. Look what it did. So you can't tell me that humans are not impacting the Earth's frequency. So it spiked to over 50 hertz over a two day weekend and it stayed there. Now what happens is these spikes actually cause the water in our body to vibrate with the spike. We are 70% water, animals are about 75% water. And these spikes can cause us to not feel that great. Now look at May, look at May 4th. When was May 4th? That was Monday. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. We spiked to 90. And then today we spiked to 66. This is just happening now. This is our new norm. I get a lot of questions from people who understand this, who ask me when we're going back to normal. Well, that's in the past, we can't go into the past. This is our new normal. The earth is trying to birth into a new energy. We got to go with it and so do our pets. Yeah, I just saw the comment. This gives me chills, isn't it? I find it fascinating. It's really interesting. I now really look at the Schumann resonance every day and then I look and I can see it play out. I see it play out on social media. I see it play out in the news. I see it play out with my pets and with me. And this is what it feels like. You feel like you're on a roller coaster. And instead of being belted in, and this is where I'm going to talk about the oils, because the oils belt us in. They belt our pets in on the roller coaster so that we're riding it. And yeah, we're screaming our lungs off, but we're having fun. And if you don't belt yourself in, you are riding that roller coaster and you're hanging on by a pinky. And what you're going to feel is icky and your pets are gonna feel icky. Now remember your pets are feeding off of you and they're feeding off of the earth. So not only are they feeling this from the earth, they're doubly feeling it from you. This is why we, we gotta do everything that we can to feel as good as we can. Just do the best that you can, that's all, that's all we can do. So if you feel icky, if you feel wired and tired at the same time, like, I'm trying to go to bed and I'm so wired and then I wake up tired. It's like, what the heck is going on? Well, that's autoimmune. <laughs> if you feel cranky and angry and you're snappish at people, you're just, ah, you know, you just snap and people are triggering you and setting you off or you're sad, you're depressed, you feel helpless, you're lethargic, you're immobilized, like you can't do anything. You, you just, you sit at home under the covers, and you're drinking your quarantinis all day, and you just, you, you can't get going. You feel, and you're sleepless. 
It, it, it's impacting every part of your life. And what it means is you're not in tune with what's happening on the earth. So we gotta, we kinda gotta get you connected and we gotta get your pets connected. So monitoring your frequency is, is really important. So here are some things that lower your frequency and are gonna lower the frequency for your pet. And then you're all just gonna feel icky. When you don't sleep, when you're stressed, when you have unhealthy relationships, and that unhealthy relationship could be with the person that you look at in the mirror. When you eat acidic foods, when you drink coffee, oh, and that just breaks my heart every time I say that because I am such a coffee girl. <laughs> but it's true. When you drink alcohol, when you take medications, when you smoke cigarettes, and when you are surrounded by electromagnetic frequencies, like we all are, because we've all been on lockdown. And so we play on Wi-Fi. That all lowers your frequency, which is why people who are on lockdown are feeling worse, okay? Let's raise your frequency. You do it through positivity, positive relationships, positive mindset, meditation, giving and receiving prayer, energy healing, eating real food, like looking at the food and saying, I know that that's a cucumber. I know that that's a piece of salmon. When you look at a Cheeto, that's not real food. It may taste really darn good, but that's not real food. So real food, fresh air, get out of your house and get fresh air. Hug a tree, put your feet on the ground, get moving, use mantras. One of my favorite mantras is all is well, all is well. Because seriously, in this moment, all is well, because I'm hanging out with all of you. All is well. Use affirmations, stick them everywhere. I have affirmations in my freezer. I have them everywhere. Put them everywhere. Work with crystals. Work with your pure essential oils. Yeah, the Calm app is phenomenal. Oh my gosh, they have bedtime stories. They're really cool. Yeah, Jean, drinking coffee all day. I know. It's, to me, it's a ritual. It's comfort. I love it, love it, love it. But then I do something to raise my frequency. Okay. So I'm not saying give up everything. Okay. We're human. <laughs> we, we got to have, you know, the things that we love, but do things to raise your frequency. And then you're going to feel better. Your pet's going to feel better. So let's get into the energy of essential oils. Let's get to the oils part. My gosh, this webinar is going to go far longer than I thought. Oh my gosh, you guys, I wanted to get it done in an hour. I can tell you right now, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> I hope this is interesting to you because I can't not tell you all this stuff. Okay, I hope this is interesting. So the um, essential oils have a frequency. Um, I'm not going to get into deep detail, but Gary Young and Bruce Tenio of Tenio Technology um, worked with this. It's called the B3 Frequency Monitoring System, and they were measuring the relationship between frequency and disease. While they were doing it, they measured the frequency of certain essential oils. Now, the frequency of essential oils were measured many years ago. I mean, I'm talking two decades ago. And on a large scale, have not been retested. And I keep seeing the same frequencies being passed around online. But here's the thing. The frequency can differ based on the quality of the essential oil, even if it's the same brand, when it was harvested, when it was distilled. What, what was the vibration of the planet at the time? Even the frequency of people coming into contact with the botanical and the oils can alter the frequency, which is why Young Living in particular has standards that the workers in the field of what they can and can't do, like they can't be angry, they can't use bad words. Every bit, yes, Heather, every batch can be different. So here's the thing. How the frequency of the oil and how it makes you feel, that's how you know what the frequency is. And, and what I know is that lower frequency oils assist with physical balance and higher frequency oils that raise you up assist with emotional and spiritual balance, okay? All right, so let's get into pets, okay? Because you're probably all like, Allie, let's talk about pets. I need to delay that foundation because I think you see that there is so much 
that impacts our pets. So much that is out of our control, but so much that's in our control. So um, for those of you who follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you probably know Stella and Rudy. Um, you're gonna see photos of Dobby. Rudy is sitting on the back of my chair, as he always does. And they are always available to help educate, especially on oils for cats. So let's talk about the big elephant in the room, okay? So if you have ever seen a social media story of, you know, essential oils made my dog, dog sick or killed my cat or, you know, these graphics of, you know, all of these oils are toxic to pets, you know, citrus oils and eucalyptus oils, don't use them. So here's the thing, it's creating a lot of confusion and panic and it makes me berserk. Because of these stories, we don't know the backstory on these posts. We don't know the health issues that these pets already had. We don't know what food they were eating. They could have been eating junk food. We don't know if they had toxic pet toys. Most pet toys are toxic. I hate to tell you that. Go on to Etsy and buy organic baby toys. Those are the best pet toys. So we don't know if they were, they were putting toxic pet toys in their mouth. We don't know how many toxins were in the home? Were they using candles and plugins and sprays and aerosols and toxic cleaners? We don't know what essential oils were used. We don't know the brand that was used. We don't know how it was used. We don't know. Don't react to these posts. Please don't. We don't know. It just makes us berserk and it creates a lot of confusion. And then when I see these graphics going around with you know, all of these oils are toxic and you can't use them with your pets it never has the author on them it's like you know what some eight-year-old could have sat at his computer and made that graphic i don't know who made that graphic if i make a graphic my name is always on it you can trace it right back to me and i will stand by it so I just wanted to talk about the big elephant in the room and you don't need to worry about those and you don't even need to defend Young Living Oils. You don't. Just keep doing what you're doing. So the problem with other oils, and I am gonna talk about Young Living. We could have people using other brands here. I'm only gonna talk about Young Living because that's the brand that ethically and morally I can recommend to everybody. And it's because of, adulterated oils are the problem with pets. That's really the problem. Because at the end of the day, no one is gonna tell me that the lavender plant out in my yard is harmful when my cat Rudy goes out on his leash and rolls around in it. No one's ever gonna convince me that it's toxic. It's what humans do to it after they pull it out of the ground. And the adulteration can come from vegetable or mineral oils, including cheaper essential oils, putting in synthetics, like a synthetic man-made lavender, putting in other unnatural components. Here's the thing, this is what animals have adverse reaction to is the adulteration, that's the problem. It's not whether lemon is safe or eucalyptus is safe, that's not the issue. So when people come to me and say, what oils are safe? I come back and say, it's the brand. The brand is either safe or it's not. So adulteration impacts any therapeutic value, even if it says therapeutic grade on the bottle. So even if that label says therapeutic grade, if you can't use it in all the ways that we know that we can use oils, inhalation, topically, and ingesting, then it's adulterated. And this is why transparency and trusting the company is so important because too many adulterated scents are overwhelming the systems of our pets. They have very sensitive scent receptors in their nose. And this is why we see animals in big cities cannot connect with the ground because they live in a cement jungle, jungle but they can connect with essential oils. And this is how we can help them deal with all of this energy that's going on. So the sense of smell in pets is pretty strong. And aroma is the main communication that happens between the plant and the animal kingdom. Now humans rely more on sight, but animals rely more on scent. 
So animals are happier in environments that support their instinctual programming, which includes scent. And this is why oils are great for animals. And it makes me sad when people have such a negative opinion about it and say, well, all, all oils are toxic to cats. And it's like, no, your narrow mindset is toxic to cats. Sometimes I just can't help myself. So, <laughs> so with pets, we don't even need to open the bottle and they already smell it. So when we use oils, a little goes a long way because look at the scent receptors in dogs, 149 to 300 million, and cats have about 45 to 80 million scent receptors. We have 5 million. So I always say, if it smells strong to you, it is really super strong to them. So let's talk about, let's talk about cats real briefly. So here, here's the short story. Cats are deficient in the cytochrome P450 liver metabolism pathway, which helps the liver to metabolize to excrete compounds, including medication and essential oils, through the urine. This is unique to felines, and it's why people are nervous to use oils with cats, but this is not the only way that cats eliminate oils. And it doesn't mean that they can't, they just do it differently. So they do it, you know, slower than dogs and humans. And there was this really super awesome study, thank you Susan and Albright for sending it to me, from 2017 that found that cats actually may eliminate like plants do. Hmm, the animal and the plant kingdom like to communicate. Isn't that awesome? I think cats are smarter than we think. So there's a lot of hyped up twisted information about cats and oils, but we can use Young Living Oils with cats, period. Okay, the slower elimination means it can build up, but the Young Living Oils work through their system in a safe way. And it's because of our seed to seal process. That is the difference. So just start slow, get your cats used to essential oils, take them for a regular vet checkup, get their liver values tested if you're nervous. My cat's liver values get tested every six months and as they get older, their liver values get better. Hmm, seems kind of backwards, doesn't it? Not when you're working with oils. So I have no nervousness because I do this and I test their liver values frequently. So feel free to do that, but you do not need to worry about Young Living Oils and Cats. Now, if it's another brand, I can't recommend it. I cannot, I'm sorry. I've tested a lot of them and my cats won't even go through other, go near other oils. So I can only recommend Young Living. So here, and here's how I, you know, I'm a lawyer, I can't help it. And I came up with this test and this is in the Oily Pet book. And it's how I identify pet essential, pet safe essential oils. Does the label prohibit use with pets? Many do. Does the company promote their oils to be used for pets? Hmm, I really only find one that does. Does the company oversee the process from start to finish to ensure purity and safety? Is the oil therapeutic grade and not fragrance? Does the company work with veterinary and animal care experts in the creation of some of their products? Do they provide education on oils for animals? Do you find posts and blogs and trainings? And then what is the brand that all the pet essential oil books are discussing? Even if they don't mention them by name, you know who they're talking about. This is the test. And if you can answer these questions favorably, then you're good to go. But let's have a little common sense here. So oils that have high phenols, phenols are responsible for the fragrance of an oil. So, you know, if, if it's high phenol, it's gonna be strong to us and really, really strong to pets. And so when people are out there advising to not use oils that are high in phenols, especially with cats, they're not looking at essential oils where the whole plant and the whole oil has been extracted during distillation. And I wish I had time to go through the extensive distillation process that Young Living does, but this is why quality and processes are so important because if they stop distillation too soon or do it too long, it can create a problem. 
So, but with these oils, here's the thing. Do you really need to use them? Really, I mean, topically on, on, on any pet, do you need to use them? Most often not. But are you diffusing them? If you are, just go light. Go light on them. And just watch for signs that the oils may be too strong. They're gonna leave the room if they're too strong. They're gonna to go to another part of your house, okay? So just go light, but you're okay to use them. And then please don't ever Google essential oils and pets. It's gonna freak you out. It'll absolutely freak you out. Just don't do it. And don't believe everything on the internet. And when you see a graphic that has no attribution, no name on it, don't believe it. And when people send it to you and say, see, I told you, you can't use oils with pets. Just say, do you really believe everything that's on the internet? Come on, let's have a little common sense. And only use oils if you're comfortable with them and if you're educated in how to use them. So rely on Young Living specific resources. Do your own research. Be conservative because less is more with pets. Monitor their response. They may, they're like us. They may like certain oils and not like other oils. And let them choose. And I'm gonna show you how you let them choose because we never force oils on pets unless it's really an emergency situation. So let's talk about some ways to, to use the oils because we're gonna start, we're gonna really help our pets with all of this energy. Put the oils on you first because you're feeling that energy too. So wear a diffuser necklace, especially if you have pets or you're around pets that are scared or timid. Let the oils work to calm your energy and then they're gonna feed off of that calm energy, right? All of those physics principles are gonna come into play. Let them feed off of your energy. So you put Valor on, gee, they're gonna start getting into that Valor energy. Topically put it on the back of your net. I like to put it over my heart. Um, just make sure that you don't have oils on your fingers and then offer your hands to your pets because that's just putting stinky hands in their face. Now that's my cat Stella. And I think it was on the second day that I had her, she was already licking oils off of me. So she is really an oily cat. So the oils are gonna help us stay balanced. And then we become a human diffuser for them. The next thing is pet aromatherapy. So get your diffusers going. But remember, if it smells strong to you, it's really strong to them. So make sure it's a cool mist diffuser. We don't heat our oils. Make sure that your pets can come or go. You know, don't lock them in a room. Start with just a few drops in the diffuser. Like I'm sitting here in my office right now, diffusing Harmony, um, which is a key oil for pets right now. And yep, all three of my cats are sitting in here. I just put two drops in the diffuser. That's all that's needed. And use oils in your car diffuser when you're transporting your pets. And they can even smell direct from the bottle because when something emotional is happening, we and our pets need to smell the oil, okay? So not topical, smell it. Sometimes they just wanna smell right from a bottle. All right, and then you want to look for interest. You want to get their permission. So here's a video of my cat, Jacob. Rest in peace, he passed away a couple of years ago. And I kind of ambushed him while he was sleeping. And I'm testing all different oils, so that was geranium. I want you to look at his eyes and look at his nose. He liked geranium. Look at his nose go. Look, he's like, oh, mama, I love geranium. It's the poor man's rose. <laughs> Wasn't he beautiful? Oh, big blue eyes. All right, here comes Helichrysum. We're looking for consent. Consent means I come halfway, but he's got to come the other half. I'm about a foot away from him. I never stick it in their face. Look at his eyes and nose. He's like, no, he's squinting. He did not like Helichrysum. Mm -mm. 
That look said, Mama, get that stinky oil away from me. Here's Melissa, the oil for highly sensitive pets and people. It's really strong. He came to it, but it's really strong. So when I used Melissa with him, I really had to go very light, but he came to it. When they walk away or don't come to it, they're telling you something, okay? Let them walk away. All right, so. You can also put drops of oil on a surface, like on a, a carrier door if you're transporting them or crating for some reason, um, putting it on a blanket, on a cloth toy, in an air vent, not on collars, because they can't get away from it. They can't. That's like hanging a porta potty around your head. Mm -mm, don't do it. Please don't do it. Give them the option to walk away when they need to. And aroma litter, okay, I wanted to stick this in here because we are at home and litter, even if it's the dust-free, scent-free, still gets into the air and there's still odor to an extent. And that's gonna impact your health and it's gonna impact their health. So aroma litter is amazing. So there's the recipe, baking soda, put four drops of oil, smush it all together, toss it in, scent free litter okay um it'll really help especially while we have been indoors so much because the pollution in our home is not good this is why diffusing and getting the oils in the air is good when we want to topically apply you know emotionally i like it when we can smell the oils topically is when we want the body to balance so here's my recipe for cats and small dogs under 25 pounds, eight to nine drops of an organic carrier oil or the V6 oil to one drop of, of the Young Living oil and then put it down their spine. Down their spine. Doesn't matter where on the body you feel the oil needs to go, the oil is gonna saturate every cell in the body. It's gonna go to where it's needed. Down the spine is best because they are less likely to lick it off. It's okay if they do but we wanna get it in the skin. So put it down the spine, okay? Dogs over 25 pounds, you can put one drop neat. And the hair follicles actually absorb the oil and act like a wick. So the question is what carrier oils do cats prefer? Okay, cats are like people, you just gotta find out. I like the V6 oil, I like uh, organic coconut oil. You really got to make sure it's organic because there's a lot of adulterated carrier oils out there. Um, never put oils on the face or on paws. Paws, they're just going to lick it off. Paws is really intrusive. Um, paws is, is where they detox. So we don't want to put oils there because we want them to detox out that way. And never around their face because of their highly sensitive scent. Never in ears, never near eyes, never near the nose, okay? So, you know, sometimes even with my cats, I'll put one drop straight, but I put it in my hands first. I rub it in my hands so that I'm getting most of it, and then I wipe it down their spine. A nifty trick is to keep your old Young Living bottles and pre-create these carrier oil blends. So like I have a kitty digize blend that already has the carrier oil and the digize already pre-blended so that I can grab it real quick. All right, screenshot this. These are the oils that I feel very strongly are helping with the new energies. Are there more oils than this? Absolutely. These are the ones that I keep coming to again and again and again when you just need to calm the energy around you. Maybe the kids are running around screaming, your pets are going bananas, the doorbell rings, the FedEx guy brings your essential rewards order, the TV is blaring, you have heightened energy around you. Melissa, peace and calming, Valerian, Vetiver. Melissa, and I'm talking energetically at this point, okay? I'm talking energetically. 
is for, Melissa is for highly sensitive pets and people, highly reactive pets, and pets and people that have just shut down emotionally. Okay, this is really gonna help you. Peace and calming just chills out the energy in your space, in your home, wherever you use it, maybe in your car. Valerian and vetiver energetically have the, I mean, I just call it the pass out oils and the stop the damn fireworks oils and the full moon is making me crazy oils. That's what valerian and vetiver do, ultra calming. Now, if your pets are fighting, if your kids are fighting, if people in the house are fighting, if you're fighting with your pets, if just everybody's fighting, we need some good relations. And this is where lavender helps. Did you know that lavender balances all of the chakras pretty much instantly? Mm-hmm, it does. It does, I've tested this. So does Harmony. The acceptance oil helps us to stop fighting against the energy around us. So stop fighting against the new energy and stop fighting against, oh, I wish we could just go back to the way things were. And I just, I wish this would end. And, you know, stop wishing your life away. You need, just accept that this is where we're at. We're heading into a new energy and your pets are going to feel it. They're gonna feel that acceptance. I love the acceptance oil for pets. It's one of my favorites. The harmony oil balances body, mind, and spirit. It resets instincts. It's like rebooting a computer and it balances all the chakras because when pets have their, re have their instincts reset, they go back to normal. They go back to normal energy. We go back to normal energy. Rudy was chasing Dobby last week for no apparent reason, like full on dog chasing a squirrel sort of energy going on. And so I had been diffusing harmony nonstop and it's worked. There's been no chasing. Everybody's happy. Now handling this new energy where the, everything is spiking with the Schumann's resonance. Oh my gosh. Higher unity, loyalty, sacred angel, and white angelica higher unity when there's a lot of people and pet drama happening that's when you use higher unity this is this is the oil to be your best without one-upping anybody so it's really great during power struggles so if you're doing a lot of work from home and you're power struggling with people get the higher unity out to get your energy in check um, if there's power struggles between you and your kids or you and your pets, get the higher unity oil out. This um, loyalty oil, um, oh my gosh, it has rose and sacred frankincense, sacred sandalwood, Idaho blue spruce, Melissa, vetiver, angelica. Oh my gosh, an amazing blend that will ground you to the earth and belt you in on that roller coaster and let you ride that high frequency energy. Sacred, or sacred Angel does the same thing, but it really helps to energetically at the frequency level to release worry, stress, and negativity and help you see opportunities in a crisis, get you out of this kind of pandemic energy. And then White Angelica is the protection from energy vampires. This is the wrap your dog in a blanket oil. I mean, that picture is white angelica. That's what white angelica does. Let's just wrap you up in a warm blanket and watch a Hallmark movie and eat cheese popcorn. That kind of tells you what I do sometimes. <laughs> to boost mood, okay? So let's get, let's all be happy now, all right? Don't worry, be happy. Frankincense works on the grief meridian in the lung because we are in an energy that's bringing up some deep seated grief emotions use frankincense it'll make you happy inner child happy joy is happy release let's release the past and be happy these are phenomenal oils i love to use the release oil with pets Grounding, okay, so we need to ground to this energy that we're in so that we can ride it. The grounding oil is amazing. Um, present time, 
um, really helps because when we become disconnected from the earth's vibration, we don't feel good. This is the reset button oil. Present time is. It'll reset the button and get you connected to the earth again. Sacred Mountain, well, the name kind of says it all. I call this the Sedona Vortex Oil. This just grounds you. It energetically releases negative energy. It opens your energy flow. It soothes fear and helps you hold firm during a crisis. Gee, <laughs> who's all gonna go run out and buy Sacred Mountain now? Isn't that awesome? And then the feelings kit. Oh my gosh, if you, if you are so emotionally drained and fried, get the feelings kit. If you need the protocol, email me, message me, find me, carry your pigeon me, I will send you the protocol. And do, rain, do the raindrop technique on you and your pets and add in frankincense. When you're doing a raindrop on your cat, you're, you're just gonna fill a bottle with 90% carrier oil and just put like three to four drops of the raindrop oils in and you just gotta blend, you put a couple drops down their back, it's that simple. All right, let me give you a couple of examples and then we're gonna wrap up. This has gone longer than I thought. That cat was not happy. He was very stressed out at the shelter and freaking out all the other cats. He even freaked me out a bit. Doing okay? You want to smell? You've been very agitated. You've been very agitated. Well, that seems to be working better than the peace and calming. Uh huh. You're okay. That whole scenario took about two minutes. And I used the bottle, I just waved it back and forth because there was no diffuser in his particular room. Um, and you, you see a big difference in his energy. And he was really reactive and creating a lot of problems for other cats and even the staff and it worked beautifully. He just needed to smell it. And then if you have pets that are going to rumble at any moment, like these two cats, I stuck a bottle of valerian in between them and it totally chilled out what was transpiring because I'll tell you, the cat on the left was like, you are in my hood. You need to get off of that cat scratcher or I'm going to open up a can of whoop ass on you. And then the cat on the right was like, make my day. <laughs> and oh my gosh, they were making the craziest noises and I thought for sure I was going to get caught in a crossfire and with my foot I slid the valerian between them and 30 seconds later they broke their stare and they walked in opposite direction. So you don't have to put the oil in their face. That's why I like to show this. You just even open up the bottle they're going to smell it. So remember last September, Hurricane Dorian was really um, hitting the Caribbean and it really hit the Bahamas. Well, 130 dogs from the Bahama Humane Society came up here to Michigan and this was Bahama Bessie. She arrived and was in horrible shape. She was so physically ill and they couldn't figure out why. She couldn't keep any food down. Everything was coming out of both ends. She was shaking, she was just traumatized. And so they called me in to work with her. 
I used peace and calming. I used valerian on her. And you see the before picture. I mean, she just looked so needy. And then I'm rubbing the oils down her spine. And within about two minutes, she laid down. And she slept so hard. We actually couldn't wake her. And the behaviorist looked at me and said, oh my gosh, Allie, did you kill her? And I'm like, no, she's snoring. She's in a deep sleep for the first time in a week because she hadn't slept. She was terrified because the hurricane, they felt it. They evacuated before the hurricane hit, but animals feel that before it hits. So, and then she was in a plane and then she came up here and it was all different. So again, these oils can really help tremendously. And then let's show you Dino. This is Dino. He's 12 years old and he's very scared. So I'm going to take a little bit of Valor. And put a little bit on his blanket. Smell it. Oh, his nose is moving. He can smell it. Do you know? Oh, his nose go. You're okay. So Dino was 12 years old, terrified at the shelter, was there for about two months. I spent a lot of time working with him with the oils. And on the day that I decided to adopt him, his name is Dobby now, this is what he did. This is how good he looked and he chose me. And so then I had to integrate him with my cats. So here's the, here's the first time that Dobby meets Rudy. Whoops, where's the video? There's the video. So the tea away oil really helped them, help Dobby because I didn't know his background and he was traumatized at the shelter and I brought him home and it really helped him and Rudy acclimate very nicely together and Stella, which was awesome. So I just wanna end with this. This is a blend that I have been recommending. I'm calling it the all is well blend because it will really help you not panic during this time. It will help you feel good as the energies of our planet change and it'll help your pets feel good during this time too. So if you want to grab a copy of the Oily Pet, I, I, the Oily Pet has a lot of information in it. It'll help you teach a class from it. I go through toxic pet environment, identifying safe oils. I go through labeling laws the do's and don'ts, when to use them, where to use them, more on cats and oils, um, and you can get a bulk discount. So um, if you want to learn more, 
feel free to go to my website, grab it. I actually have them here in stock. I don't have to wait for the printer and I can get them out in the mail to you. And then remember, I've got a couple of more classes coming up, including the oily crystal, which is gonna be amazing. You're gonna be really surprised at the information in that. And then let's stay connected. I mean, if you've got an essential oil Facebook page, I'd be honored to give a 30 minute talk and I can keep it to 30 minutes when I just talk about oils and pets. But I really had to give you guys a lot on the energy and the frequency. So thank you for being so patient. You have done great. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording at this time.